All right. Hello. Thank you all for attending. My name is Dan Springer. I'm the Gallatin County Sheriff. With me today, I have our investigations captain, Nate Cameraman. He heads uh, our investigative division, which is made and supervises some of the finest, most hardworking uh, detectives that I know. And what happened here is, and also today is Jillian Price. Jillian is the sister of our victim, Dustin Gerson. On October 12th, the sheriff's office received a report of a male found deceased in his wall tent approximately two and a half miles up Moose Creek. The male has been identified as 35-year-old Dustin Gerson of the Belgrade, Belgrade Bozeman area. This is a homicide and we are working all hours of the day and night to find his killer. Jillian described Dustin as a caring, hardworking, and loving brother. He was brutally killed at his campsite, and we need your help. I'm going to turn this over to Captain Cameraman so he can describe to you what it is that we need from you. Captain Cameraman. Good afternoon. Um, we put together several facts uh, for you to hopefully help the community narrow down exactly what we're looking for, as well as um, jostle any memories out there of anyone that may be up there and encourage people to come forward with information. Dustin was last seen in the afternoon hours of Thursday, October 10, 2024. He was leaving to go camping up Moose Creek in his black 2013 Ford F-250 with a black topper and an aluminum silver ladder rack. He was well prepared for a weekend of camping and had plans to meet with a friend on Friday afternoon, but he never made that meeting. He was located deceased in his tent shortly after 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. Autopsy has shown that he sustained multiple chop wounds, quote, which led to his death. We're following up on leads, but we have no arrest at this time. We're asking the community members to help us in this way. What we need from you is anyone who was present in the area between the evening hours of Thursday, October 10, and the early morning hours of Saturday, October 12, to reach out to us. That's up Moose Creek. Anyone with trail or game ca cameras in the Moose Creek area, please reach forward, even if the footage seems irrelevant. Anyone with in-car cameras traveling in the Moose Creek area during this time frame, please reach out to us. Anyone who saw the victim's truck, as a picture will be provided both on our Facebook site as well as I believe it's been provided to media. Um, anyone that's seen that truck during the time frame mentioned, um, please come forward to us. And anyone who saw something out of place, out of the ordinary, in the areas surrounding Moose Creek, think of the whole canyon. If you saw something weird in the canyon area or in town with this truck, please reach out to us. That time frame again is between the evening hours of Thursday, October 10, and early morning hours of Saturday, October 12th. Uh, thank you for everyone who has already reached out with information. We've been given multiple leads and we are working to um, close those leads and find what direction they take us. Um, we have, my folks are working around the clock. Um, and again, as the sheriff said, we need your help on this. Anything you can bring to us would be greatly appreciated and may, may make a huge difference on what we find here. Thank you. So we want you to better understand who, Dest who Dustin was. And so to do that, Julian Price, his sister, would like to say a few things. This weekend, we lost our brother, our son, our uncle, our best friends, and our dad in the most unimaginable way. Dustin was a great kid. He was born here in Bozeman, and he worked all over the valley. He could have framed your house. He could have poured your foundation. He could have installed your countertops. He was a hardworking, skilled tradesman. He was a loving, helpful, and adorning father who in no way deserved this. I ask our community to please help us find out who did this. There is someone in our valley that is capable, 
capable of truly heinous things. Please, if you are in Moose Creek at any time from Thursday to Saturday, please call and talk, even if you think you didn't see anything. So we do not have anyone in custody at this time. People have asked me if there's a threat to this community, and the answer is we don't know. We don't have enough information to know at this time, but we do know that someone was out there who killed someone in a very heinous way. So if you're out in the woods, I need you to be paying attention. You need to remain vigilant. If you see anything suspicious, please just call us. Um, we will take a look. We're, we're not, no information is too small. If there's something, please call us. Um, and at this time, we will take some questions. I will take some questions. Do you have any idea when the weapon could We don't have an exact idea what the weapon is, but we do know that it was something hard enough to cause significant damage to the skull um, as well as uh, some fleshy areas of the body. So we had contact with him Thursday afternoon, not we, but the uh, family, we know that he was in contact with people on Thursday afternoon. Uh, he drove up into the cane. As most of you know, there is so, there's limited service up there to no service. And so his time frame of, of missing was from that Thursday afternoon into Saturday morning about 10 a.m. when he was found deceased. So whether, what time exactly he was killed, we don't have that yet. I was wondering if you could describe the area of the, the campsite and what's around there. Yeah, so it's not an official campsite. It's kind of your standard forest service area where uh, people make their own campsites, but then it becomes kind of an established one. Um, he had a, a wall tent, it's probably eight by 10, uh, 10 by 10, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, it was uh, very well kept. He had lots of equipment up there with him. He had been planning to kind of um, spend the, a weekend with a friend up there and had set it all up prior to them getting there. And um, so it's, uh, there's a lot of hunters up in that area. There are some outfitters. There are people that are just living up there or camping. So there is a lot of activity, um, even though it's fairly remote. Is there any information on who found him? Information on who found him. So the friend that he was going to pick up um, was missing. Uh, obviously, he, he did not show up. So they went looking for him and the friend, someone who found him. Yeah, so the question is, are there elements of this case that makes it uh, harder to, to uh, solve? I'm repeating the questions because the, the microphone right here doesn't pick up your questions. So, uh, yes, honestly, the, um, given the location where there is limited service, cell phones and those kind of things, which are typically very, a lot of help for us, um, may not have the same answer. So a very remote area is, is difficult, um, as well as um, time. Uh, there's been a, there was a number of maybe hours to days from the time he might have been killed to the time that it was reported. So anytime we have a leg, it, it can make a, a case more difficult. People looking to reach out with information, how should they go about that? Yeah, thank you. So the question is, where do you go to, to uh, if you have information? If it's during the business hours, please call 406-582-2121. You can also leave a message there if it's not immediate. If it's something that needs immediate attention, please call 406-582-2100, option number one, and that'll get you to dispatch, who will then get you to a deputy, and you can tell them that this, what this is about, and they'll get the information um, if that's something that needs attention right away. Non-business That would be kind of the non-business hours if you know, or you can leave a message at the one for business hours. Yeah, so think of this as a large jigsaw puzzle, okay? And it's gonna take multiple, so what's the, the question is, what, what do I tell somebody if, um, if they don't think the uh, information they have is, is um, a, a worthwhile or not big enough? The answer to that is, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle when you're working on these cases. You will, we will get little pieces here and there, and e eventually that creates a big, large picture that makes some sense. 
So if you have a little piece of that puzzle, anyone that's ever done a jigsaw puzzle, if you can't find that one little piece, someone knows where it is, someone has some information. If you think it's important, even if you don't think it's important, let us know. And let us deem if it's important or not, but it might be that little piece that kind of puts the big picture together for us. Thank you all for being here. I'm oh, sorry, was there another one? Okay. Thank you all for being here. Um, thank you, Jillian. And, you know, the, the Sheriff's Office is dedicated to, to finding out what's going on here. Um, please reach out to us if you have anything. So thank you for your time.